Today's story takes place in the lovely state of Oregon, a state with pine-covered mountains that in winter are frosted with snow, with clear streams that tumble over rocky boulders. It's a state with lumber mills, woolen mills, and paper mills, rodeos, and ranches. And it is on a ranch called the Circle S that my story begins. The Circle S ranch belongs to Big Jim and his wife, Vi. It was here that Little King came to live. Now, Big Jim's birthday was a very special day for Vi, and the gift that she would give him had to be extra special. On the top shelf of the corner china closet stood a lovely teapot, hand-painted with roses. All through the year, any extra change or cash left over from her household money was put into the old china teapot. This money was used only for extra special things like Big Jim's birthday. 75, 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20. I wonder what I could get for Jim's birthday that he would really like. Let's see. He's mentioned how nice it would be to have a dog around the ranch. 26, 30, 34. $34.80. A big man like Jim should have a big dog. Maybe a collie or a German Shepherd. Well, $34.80 certainly won't buy one of those. I wonder how much the Youngs are asking for one of their Fox Terriers. I hardly think a little dog would be the answer, but would it do no harm to drive by and look them over? When Vi saw the litter of puppies, she fell in love with a little black and white one that had a funny black patch over one eye. Oh, look at that one. Oh, aren't his markings beautiful? That black patch over one eye. Yes, I was talking about you, little fellow. My, he's bright and active. Oh, you're very observing, Vi. He's been the most aggressive one of the litter, right from birth. Oh, you made a good choice. Oh, he'd be a perfect gift for Jim. <laughs> well, he's an awfully small dog for such a big guy as your Jim. Well, wouldn't Jim rather have a large dog that would be more help around the ranch? Oh, I really think Jim will like this little terrier just as well. I have a problem, though. I only managed to save about $35, and I'm sure you're getting more than that for these pups. Well, it's true they're pedigreed and have a distinguished ancestry, but I'd be happy to just give you one. Your Jim helped out so much when my Bill was hurt in that lumber accident last winter. I don't know what we'd have done if it hadn't been for Jim. Oh, please, let me just give you one. Oh, no, no. Jim was happy to help out. That's what neighbors are for. Besides, this is my birthday gift for him. I want to buy the pup. Now, please, accept my 3480. Well, I can understand that you want to buy the dog since it is a gift for Jim, but, but $25 is all I'll take for him. But as you said, this one is the choice of the litter. I can't do oh, that. Yes, you can, and you will. No more arguing. All right, it's a deal. And I really appreciate your generosity. I don't want the puppy until the day before. So all the arrangements were made. The little dog would be delivered to the ranch the day before Jim's birthday. When he arrived, Vi smuggled him into the bunkhouse. Very, very early the next morning, Bill, the foreman, brought the pup to the main house. Thanks so much, Bill. Oh, I do so want Jim to be surprised. Big Jim up yet? Oh, no. That's why I'm up so early. We'll let this little fellow be his alarm clock this morning. Oh, will Jim be surprised? He's been talking about getting a dog for a long time, but I'm sure he won't be expecting one for his birthday. Very quietly, Vi opened the bedroom door, tiptoed across the room, and placed the little pup on the bed. He cocked his head quizzically, looking at the big man. Then, with his little short tail in perpetual motion, he made his way up the patchwork quilt. When he reached the man's face, he paused, but only for one wag of his tail, put out his little pink tongue, and licked Big Jim's cheek. Oh, 
<laughs> Happy birthday, Jim. Oh. <laughs> oh, what a cute little fella. Hey, where'd you come from, little guy? <laughs> I've been needing a little dog around here. <laughs> Say, what a great gift. Oh, thank you, hon. You must have got him from the Youngs, right? But how'd you get him here at this hour of the morning? Oh, that's a deep, dark secret. Seriously, though, would you rather have had a larger dog, Jim? Maybe a collie? Oh, he may be little, Vi, but I'll bet he has a lion's heart. <laughs> I really like him, Jim. I like him. Uh, look at that face, Vi. He's an intelligent little guy. You'll learn very quickly. <laughs> Doesn't he have a comical air with that black patch over one eye? Such a funny little face. Comical? Oh, why, he looks like an aristocrat. <laughs> looks like he should be wearing a black silk top hat or, or maybe a crown. <laughs> How do you do, <laughs> little king? <laughs> hey, you like that name, don't you? Well, so do I. Little king you'll be. And little king he was from then on. Now, some friendships grow slowly, while others are instantaneous, like turning on a lamp. The friendship between Little King and Big Jim began just that way. He would follow his master all over the ranch, never letting him out of his sight. When he grew weary, Big Jim would tuck him under his arm, and off they would go on horseback. Every day, some time was spent in teaching Little King how to heal, sit and to obey all his commands. Jim was kind and patient, but firm. Sit, King Boy. Sit. Ah, no. Sit, King. Sit. Ah, a boy. Good fella. He does learn very quickly, Jim. You're a good teacher. Well, you know, Vi, dogs and humans are quite alike. Well, how's that? Neither dogs nor people are much good unless they learn to obey rules and become useful in society. We all should contribute to this life in one way or another. And as you know, there really isn't any freedom without rules. You're right about that, Jim. And those who break rules make themselves and those around them unhappy. Yeah, and like people, dogs like to be useful, too. They feel good when they successfully accomplish a task we've given them to do. Now, there was one ritual Little King especially enjoyed. Every evening, when he and his master returned to the ranch house... Oh, hi, I'm cold. Boy, am I stuck. We worked hard today. Hi. Supper will be ready in a minute. Can't let you starve. <laughs> I bet this little guy is hungry, too. All right, King. While I kick off these boots, you go fetch my slippers, huh? Look at him go. Through the house and up the stairs scampered the little dog. He was never too tired for this. From under Big Jim's bed, he retrieved one large slipper. Soon, Vi and Jim would hear a thumpity thump as the little dog would drag the slipper down the stairs. For when you have a size 13 shoe and one little fox terrier, there's almost more shoe than dog. Hey, 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 that boy. Good fella. Give me the slipper. <laughs> You're a good boy. Those slippers are almost too much for you. But you sure like to fetch them. <laughs> he surely does. He acts so ferocious, you'd think he'd caught a rabbit. <laughs> All right, King. Fetch the other one. Time passed. And even though Little King was no longer a pup, he never grew to be a very large dog. But though small of size, he was obedient and devoted to his master. Then one summer day, someone else came to live at the Circle S Ranch. Sure going to be great having you back at the ranch, Vi. Seems like you've been gone longer than a week. Besides, I certainly wasn't able to get very well acquainted with my new daughter at the hospital. Not by looking at her through a window. Well, I think you have a few years in which you'll get very well acquainted with her. And I'm glad you missed me. Or was it my cooking you missed? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> How do you think King will like baby Lisa? You know, he's had all our attention since he was a pup. Sometimes pets are jealous when a baby arrives in the family. Do you suppose King will be? King? Jealous? I, never. Well, you just wait and see. He'll adore the baby. <laughs> Probably thinks she belongs to him. Well, we'll soon know. 
we're just about home. Careful, careful now. There we go. Now give me that beautiful daughter of mine. <laughs> Here comes King. You know that's it. Hey, hey boy, come see what I got. King, this is baby Lisa. <laughs> that's right, boy. You gotta help us take care of little Lisa. Look at him wag his tail. He certainly seems to understand you, Jim. <laughs> of course he does. He's one great little dog. Jim was right. Little King did understand. When baby Lisa slept, he would station himself right beside her bassinet like an honor guard. Jeannie, come in, come in. I just couldn't wait any longer to see that new baby. Oh, I'm glad you came. King hasn't come downstairs yet, so Lisa is still sleeping. Well, she'll be waking up any time, though. Let's go up and see her. Sounds like you have a good babysitter. Oh, you can say that again. When Lisa's sleeping, King sleeps right beside her crib. The minute she wakes up, he comes bounding down the stairs to the kitchen or wherever I'm working. Oh, that's cute. And that's not all. At first, he waits quite patiently for me to come back to the nursery with him. But not for long. He gives me about 30 seconds, and then he runs back and forth, barking most impatient with me. He doesn't want me to keep Lisa waiting. <laughs> he really thinks Lisa belongs to him, doesn't he? And that's exactly what Jim said King would think. Well, here's Lisa's room. King, it's all right. Quiet now. Jeannie just came to see the baby. She won't hurt your Lisa. He really is serious about protecting her, isn't he? You won't have to worry about Lisa with him around. No, I certainly won't. Oh, Lisa's just waking up now. How's Mommy, sweet little girl? Did you have a good nap? Oh, I bet you're a hungry baby. Oh, Vi, she's just darling. Look at that dark hair. Is she sweet? Yes, King was devoted to baby Lisa. He seemed to understand that she was small and helpless and decided to be her protector. Then one day in early autumn, well, before bad weather sets in, I'm going to do some work up at the North Tavern. Yes, I suppose it's getting that time of year again. Oh, I always dread your having to go up there. How long will you have to be away? Well, it will take me about a day to get up there. You know, most of the trail is impassable, except on foot. I know. But how long will you have to work up there? Oh, probably will take two or three days. I want to set in a good supply of wood at the cabin and check the spring source. And... But, Jim... Why can't you take one of the men with you? I really would feel so much better if you did. Now, Vi, you know there's too much work right here. I can't spare one of them. Besides, I don't really need to have any help up there. I can handle it easily. Oh, and it's just that I worry. Oh, now, aren't you being a silly little wife? Don't you think a big guy like me can take care of himself? Well, this is wild country. It just doesn't make sense to take any chances. Ah, you don't have to worry, hon. No animal would attack a man during daylight. Anyway, I'll be glad when you're safely home. Will you take little King with you? Oh, of course. You know I wouldn't go without him. And that is, uh, if you and Lisa can get along without it. <laughs> well, we'll try. Seriously, though, I sometimes think you should have a larger dog. One that would... Oh, King's a fine little watchdog. He may be small, but remember, he has a lion's heart. <laughs> Isn't that right, boy? Very early the next morning, before the sun woke the clouds that slept lazily on the tops of the mountain pines, Big Jim and King were on their way. In Jim's shoulder pack was plenty of dried venison and other supplies to last them both. The hours passed quickly for Big Jim and Little King. While Jim worked, the dog chased after squirrels and chipmunks and had the time of his life. Well, little king, this morning we start for home. We should make the ranch by nightfall. That baby Lisa will be glad to see you, and Vi will have a special supper for both of us. I think we're both getting tired of this venison. <laughs> I bet the squirrels and chipmunks up here will be glad to see you leave. You've been giving them a hard time these last few days. 
Yeah. Come on, boy. Let's get going. By noon, Big Jim and Little King reached a lovely, grassy, sloping bank in a grove of pines by the river's edge. It was a perfect place to rest and have their lunch. Yeah, here's a great place to eat our lunch, King. All this walking makes a man hungry. Oh, and weary. No shade there, too. This noon sun still is awfully warm. I'm thirsty. I bet you are, too. Some food will make us both feel better. We still have a long walk ahead of us. Let's go, fella. Come on, boy. What you getting so excited about? Come, King! The little dog remained fixed to the trail. Never before had he ignored his master's command. Never had little King disobeyed. Now his body quivered nervously. The little black tail that was usually wagging now was motionless. Ears pointing straight up. A low growl coming from his throat. King looked intensely down the trail. What's the matter with you, King? There's nothing down that trail. You must have chased too many squirrels up at the cabin. Calm down, fella. I'm tired and hungry, even if you aren't. And that's just enough of this nonsense. Come on, King. Come on! King! That's more like it. Come along with me to the river, and I'll get you food and water. Then maybe you'll forget whatever's bugging you. This is no time to play. We haven't long to rest here. But little King was not interested in food, even refusing a drink of water. Instead, he lay very still on the grassy bank, his gaze fixed on the rock ledge ahead on the trail. Perplexed at little King's behavior, Big Jim ate his lunch in silence. Then he repacked the remaining supplies in his shoulder pack, slipped it on his back, and without a word to King, headed back towards the trail that led home. The dog lay still and tense in the grass. But as Big Jim reached the trail, Little King dashed after him. Excitedly, he ran in circles about the tall man's legs, frantically nipping at Jim's trousers. This tough, tough, stupid dog, what in the world has come over you? We have a long walk ahead of us. Now, stop that! Exasperated, Big Jim hurried on. As he came nearer the overhanging rock, King made even more frantic efforts to stop his hunt. All at once... Big Jim staggered and fell downward from the impact of a large cougar. A searing pain spread across his shoulders. Rolling over, he pulled himself together and scrambled to his feet, fully expecting to again be attacked. But to his utter amazement, the young cougar was now running toward the woods, and from his clenched jaws, hanging limp and motionless, was Little King. Oh, oh no, 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 he's got Little King! Oh, Oh, stupid I've been. He wasn't disobeying me. He was trying to protect me, and I wouldn't let him. For a moment, Big Jim stood dazed and helpless as he watched the big cat disappearing into the underbrush. Oh, oh poor little king. Oh, how I'll miss him. He did have a lion's heart. I was so unkind. I'll never forgive myself. Oh, I'm gonna get down to the river and wash off this wound. Stop the bleeding. From his position at the river, Big Jim could now see the ledge where the young cougar must have crouched. What had made him attack the man in daylight? Was it the scent of the deer meat in Jim's shoulder pack? Was it the excited barking of the little dog? Who could say? Now his loyal little friend was gone. Slowly, painfully, Big Jim made his way home, with each step mourning the loss of his little dog. How he wished for an opportunity to right his wrong, to make up for his impatience. so distraught. I, I, it wasn't like him to disobey me. I, I looked around several times. Of course, I didn't see anything. You couldn't see the cougar up there on that rock ledge? No, no, not, not until you get just beyond the ledge. Then the top is visible. Of 
course, King smelled the cougar long before you could see it. He could sense the danger that lay ahead. Poor little old brave dog. I certainly will miss him. He was so loyal to all of us. He adored baby Lisa. Did you try to track the cougar? Maybe you could have rescued little King. No, no, I didn't. With my wounded shoulder, without a gun, well, it just wouldn't have been any use. Little King would have made about one good bite for that cougar. Makes me shudder to think about it. I suppose you're right. But don't you think I should take some of the men and try to track that cougar? If he's attacked a man once, he... No, I'm afraid in that rough country it'd be almost impossible to track him. I suspect the reason he attacked was sent from the venison in my shoulder pack. He was a young cougar and probably hungry. Possibly little King's barking excited the cougar. Yeah, could be. Uh, I guess we'll never know. Poor little fellow. He truly did have a lion's heart. Yes, Big Jim and Little King did have a beautiful friendship. But that's not the end of my story. A few days later, Big Jim was sitting on the porch of the ranch house, watching the sun disappear behind the mountains. His shoulder was feeling much better, but he still was grieving for his little dog. The Circle S would never be the same without Little King. I guess I'll never stop missing King. He was part of the family. That sounds like a dog barking. Like little... Oh, no. I must be hearing things. No, no, no. No, I, I must be hearing things. It, it, it couldn't be. It sounds just like King's Bark. Ah, ah, come here, quick. What is it, Jim? What's wrong? Ah, ah, listen. That's from the King's Bark. Across the field there, look. Where? We can't be. We just can't be. Over Where? there, look. Look at this, little king. Here, boy, here, come here, brother. Here. Come here, old fellow. Good little old king, good fella. How did you ever get away from that cougar? I can't believe it. I just can't believe it's true. We've got our little king back. Oh, oh, oh look at these bad scratches. Oh, that was a rather oh. deep wound. Come on, let's take him in the house and clean out these wounds. Yes, yes. He's going to have an extra special supper, too. Somehow you outsmarted that cougar, you brave little fellow. <laughs> Isn't this just great? I can't believe we have him back. <laughs> that night, Little King was back at his post, sleeping beside baby Lisa's bed. And with loving care from Jim and Vi, it wasn't long until he had recovered from his almost fatal encounter with the cougar. How had he escaped? No one ever knew for sure. But you can be certain that Little King was the talk of the valley for quite a while. He received so much praise and attention that Big Jim was sure he would be spoiled. Little King lived a long and uneventful life after his ordeal with the cougar. He and Lisa became great pals and spent many happy hours together. And you can be sure that Big Jim never forgot his loyal friend. For Little King truly did have a lion's heart.